today is such an exciting release at Canal Place. We've been kind of teasing. We've been coming out with new labels. This is the very first new labeled beer that's being released. We did the Legends also on the same run, but uh, that's not going out until another couple of weeks under the shelves. But we're redoing all of our labels. We got rid of the gloss, which Carl loves. We oh, yeah. redid a lot of things, made them brighter, got rid of the black, which Carl's been complaining for like since he started. <laughs> and I just gave up, um, whatever. So it's super exciting. Uh, next month, you'll see this same label, but we're gonna wrap it in cardboard and just really up our game. But this is our newest release, Hype Cycle, an 8% double IPA, and it's gonna be a flagship. So up until now, we've only had one flagship, the Legends, a New England. People get tired of New England's, they wanna go back to just a regular IPA. So this is what we created for our second flagship. And we never really did one before because I personally never felt like a lot of our, you know, beers that we've done in the Valley, the uh, Constitutions and whatnot, knockouts that really, really made me go like, wow, we've got to scale this up. They were close. We were experimenting with hops. We get the differences. But I think I told Carl, like, it was about this time last year when we started the Hop Getaway series, we need a flagship, more of a conventional flagship, not using Citra or Mosaic or any New England hop. Go back to basics, get a flagship out. And he did it, Kyle brewed it in the valley. It tasted phenomenal. Our first scale up, you gotta keep this a secret, our first scale up that we released that flavor wasn't there, it was different. And we're like, darn it. We did figure it out and we brought the good version as a flagship or the better version. Not that the other one was bad, it was just different. It was missing some of the particular hot flavors that we were looking for. Um, and that, really what it was, it was a sourcing issue. Uh, it was lacking a very distinct kind of spicy, piney, very aggressive, catty West Coast character. We came to discover um, that the soil that the hops grow in. Terroir. Yeah, it's the soil itself actually affects some of the flavors come out with certain types of hops. So you could be growing the same breed of hops in one part of the country and get totally different flavors growing in a different part of the country. Um, the original version of the hop getaway from which this was kind of built up from, um, the hops were not sourced from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and that's why it was kind of lacking that classic West Coast aggressive caddy bay piney character. It was lacking that over the top component. Yes. I mean, that was a good IPA, but. It was good, it was different. It was more grapefruit, more rounded as opposed to, it was just lacking just a little bit of something. Uh, then we did a second batch of it um, later on using hops that we sourced in the Pacific Northwest. And this did have the more pungent hop character that we were lo really looking for. Uh, no, we figured it out between Kyle and Carl. They take good notes. We were able to figure out the sourcing issue and we won't do that again, or we will be a lot more careful. Yes. Uh, subbing hops for local hops versus, you know, non-local yeah. hops. Yeah. It makes a difference. I mean, every region is good for growing different things. Um, Ohio hops are good, especially, you know, grapefruit character for some reason seems to come out really well with the Ohio grown hops. But like I said, some of those West Coast specific characters are just not as strong. Um, but so, so we're talking about all these characteristics. And yeah, this is boring. Let's crack these open. And there we go. It's a beautiful sort of burnt orange color. Now for character malts, um, I'm not always a big fan of using crystal malts to get a balance in IPA. Uh, so to get the malt balance that we wanted, uh, we actually used some Vienna malt 
as part of our base grade. Uh, and that's kind of what gives it this nice, beautiful burnt orange color. Uh, it gives it a nice kind of slightly toasted, you know, in every in a typical classic West Coast IPA, you want some kind of either biscuity, some toast character, just a light kind of malt balance to balance out the hop character, the bitterness, what have you. Um, and so in ours, we use Vienna malt. I'm a big fan of Vienna malt. I like what it does for this beer. I like what it does in a lot of beers. Um, but yeah, so we have the Null malt, or Vienna, sorry, Vienna malt, the base grain bill. That's a nice, nice, lovely, subtle, easy, kind of toasted character in the malt. A little bit of caramel. And of course, then you get to the hops. What hops did you use? Uh, this was built around um, Amarillo, Chinook, Columbus, and Cascade. Uh, from the Cascade, you're getting quite a bit of like a grapefruit character. Um, for the Chinook especially, uh, you're getting some pine, uh, and also you can pine and spice the Columbus. And really the Columbus is doing a lot of work kind of sitting underneath some of the other aromas. So like underneath some of the more like the pine and grapefruit, you get this kind of almost like curry-like aroma to it. Especially as it warms up a touch, you'll notice it's just a very subtle layer of like this spicy, almost curry-like aroma. Yeah, it's the Amarillo, the Cascade, the Chinook doing a lot of the work up front. Mm -hmm. And the dry hop, especially with the Columbus, is doing a lot of work on the back end. Like I said, bringing forward some of the more peppery notes on the back end. You no, know, and other than the Amarillo, it's the classic sea hops for West Coast style IPAs. Oh yeah, it's pine, citrus, grapefruit, dank, catty, rosiny, even spicy, curry-like. Mm -hmm. All those in here. So. so we, as being a flagship, this will be released all year. We're just starting the release in Northeast Ohio to start. We're going to keep the batches small. Uh, our first batch was a 40 barrel batch just to get it out into some part of the market and some for us. We're going to scale it back to some 20s and do it much more frequent so it's super fresh and we retain those hop characters that we like so it's not fading just sitting in our warehouse waiting for distribution to pick right. it up then sitting in their warehouse waiting for them to sell it so super fresh northeast ohio to start and then in the following months it'll start branching out to the rest of the states yeah but it's going to be at the canal place tap room hopefully uh it'll have a permanent tap handle those aren't easy to come by anymore <laughs>